Welcome to Cobb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chavla and Sharvan Raghavan. Getting into the marketing side of things. Yeah. You mentioned you've very casually name dropped big brands and big people or big companies. So let me put you on the spot. Yes. What's been the most favorite campaign or brand that you've worked on and you've enjoyed analyzing? And let me just remind you, we worked on a brand ourselves. So yeah, just putting it out there. But <laughs> well, I'm going to take the liberty. I have like, I have ones that I've really, really enjoyed. It's one of, one of you is with definitely with you. But Thank you. Yes. But I'll come to that one later <laughs> because you came later into my life. Okay. Go ahead. Accepted. <laughs> So this is my favorite one, Move. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's when the first time I started working with Darshan by 1990. That tells mm -hmm. my age, but that's all right. I love the, uh, the, the Move study because it was about repositioning Iodex. That's the first time I said, you know, we've grown up with Iodex, right? Ooh, yeah. Ouch. And your Move is such a good brand. And we said, but before we studied Move, we actually studied body aches. Pain, everything. We knew every ache possible and the solutions for that, right? And therefore, what are the gaps? Uh, what is iodex doing well, not doing well? All of that. That time, the pain point was when you put iodex and you put your shirt on or anything, it would leave a black mark. Yes. Mm, right. And it came in this glass bottle. Mm. What we came out was a tube. Yes. White in color. What we also realized that it needed to leave a little bit of a sensorial feeling. You never mm. know when it's working, right? You've heard all the sales. Now. You put that and then you cover yourself and all of that. So it was, uh, it was great understanding what people do. Mm. The important thing was to give a nice, like once you put it, you needed to feel the product on you. Mm. Mm. A little warm feeling because that's the cocooning feeling that you require, right? Right. Mm. And you'll still do that. And that, was something that we discovered. What are the product attributes, the perceived benefits, the features. That was the first move. But my greatest aha moment of move has been, so why are people not using move? Because we had decided that move should be in everybody's first aid kit. That's what Darshan Bhai had said. Mm -hmm. Why is it not in the first aid kit? So we, we kept doing a lot of research, right? It happened different different points of time. I remember this was in Delhi and there was this lady, must be about 40 years old, and I said, I said, well, I realized that Indians have a high tolerance towards pain. We keep postponing it, do it. I said, like, I like, I said, no, something has to do. Uh, no. Nee, kuch nahi karte. I said, okay. Yeah. So then I said, but what happens to your backache? What do you do? Because you have this pain. She said, puri deir ke liye te. Hmm. I said, puri deir ke liye te. And uske baad, it becomes painful. Na? Why don't you do something about it? Why don't you see? I said, move, are you, are you going through this pain, not doing something? She turned around and saying, have you tried putting move on your back? Mm. Zip. Mm. And then I realized that, try reaching your back. Mm. She said, Kone. So I asked, who's there? She said, nobody's there. So I said, why can't you ask your husband to put it? He's saying, what are you talking about? I'm going to ask my husband. And then I realized the issues with this. Mm. And those same issues were in Chennai. Again, whether it's SEC A or B carrying those, you know, water shortage. Mm. Everybody is carrying water again back in. She's also not putting in. I said, in my word, in my new thing is, Kya? and then I realized that there had to be a caregiver. Mm. Caregiver had to be the husband, but you had to normalize that behavior. And therefore, we worked and embarked on that journey. A, who's a caregiver, correct? And making it okay for the husband to apply it to the woman's back, saying, hey, kuch kar lo, all of that. The second thing we realized that Hydex or any of these rubrifications were not our enemy. Sleep was the enemy. Sleep is your competition. Because all the time she says that I'll get better by just lying down, right? So we needed to fight that. That you don't need to lie down. You need someone to just apply this for you. Mm. And get better. Because it's such a good product. That yeah. really, really just really made me appreciate why I was in this business. Nice. It's a lovely, lovely insight and lovely case also. Yeah. yeah, I remember he hearing uh, Tanmay Bhatt of all the people talking about some of these insights. 
and mm. he says that our parents generation has grown up on bearing pain because the cure for pain was always rest and reset mm. which would take away from productivity so therefore har, har dard haseen dard tha wow, ki humne love that haseen dard tha huh? correct and this is the articulation i loved ki wo mai isi nahi chalayenge mm. kyunki har cheez har cheez ka matlab build up kar to unko har dard haseen dard lag and our generation wants to solve for this they want to live in convenience again i, I think comes from mindsets Yes, but I was kind of reminded of that articulation when I was listening to you. I love this Hasin that I'll use it right. I, yeah, I love please. These words. Give credit yes. to Tanmay Bhat. <laughs> yes, I always believe give credit where it is due, <laughs> and nobody will believe that I can say Hasin that just out of my so. You know, <laughs> can't bullshit that one. <laughs> Coming to my second favorite one, mm. right? It's working with Sharavan. Mm. Yeah, the tank set. Okay. And why I liked it is again we were building something. Hmm. If you know, in Mondelez, Tang was the very small brand. We yeah, called I, it the rounding era. Uh, mm. The rounding era. But I took the opportunity with Vijay Sekera again, a very smart guy, mm. and Sharavan got into it. And I remember my very first presentation that I made to him, and he said, "Nobody has ever made a research presentation so fun. I mm. love it." And I said, "Really?" And that set the journey of really understanding the Tang mother. You know. I've grown up on Tang as a kid, right? And I love Tang, and I couldn't believe it that they, we were struggling with Tang and why Tang is not so good and famous over here. Yeah, but the turning point, if you remember, Sharvan, was the study that we did for the one liter pack. A liter pack, yeah. Yeah. Now, what happened is these two gentlemen didn't know that internationally there was a study conducted understanding why people do not like having Tang. And mm. that was done in Delhi. Delhi is the biggest beverage market, right? Mm. And unko Coke, Pepsi, wo sab cheese, mm. and ready to drink. So we said, why are they not accepting the powder format drinks? So I deconstructed that. I'll give you three reasons. It was an aha moment for me because Delhi is all about flan. Yeah. They said, ma'am, ye to in the kitchen. Everybody can hear you're making this. I said, okay, great. I didn't know it was a problem. Because they're so used to taking it from the fridge and pouring that drink and voila. Second thing I realized is that residual image of uh, rasna, right? Mm. And those globules floating and that ugly drink again, socially embarrassing. You know, you you got your guests and then you're giving them something that just doesn't look right. You couldn't afford to get them a Coke or a Pepsi or a thing, right? And the third thing I realized is that while they were making the tank. They had to keep tasting to get it right. It yes, was consistent. perfect. Yeah. It's yeah. never perfect. Whereas when you have a ready to drink, it's always the same, right? And that Correct. I think led to saying that if we have to create a product, tank product, which dissolves completely, and you can make a ready to drink tank, what would that be? Mm. And mm -hmm. why I find this study, you know, I always remember that I told people, fantastic. R and D guy said. The product was working well in on, but the important thing was a one liter, right? Bottle that they had to make it in. Yes, yeah. and it was Sharan and I discussed. I don't. We said, let's see how they really make it here. We are thinking they're going to do it the way we we are going to tell them to do it. When we gave those packs, we did it only in Bombay. I think seven to eight people. I said, let's do it. To a horror, we realized that we had told people that ye jo apko ek liter pani mein banana. Women decided to make it the way they thought it. You know the typical way is to make it in the vessel and stir it and all of yeah. that. Make it in the bartan. Another lady shocked us because her one liter bottle was actually the Pepsi bottle, which is not a one liter, one point five. Hmm. So there itself is a recipe for disaster and failure, right? You have a damn good product, but you have a consumer who has old methods of making it or is doing whatever they feel like inconsistency. So the best success for this was to launch by giving them the one liter bottle. Yeah. In fact, that's why I remember from calling it the one liter pack. We also called it the one liter bottle pack. We started the promo with the bottles. Now I was in sales then. We loved the bottles. We were giving it away for free. Correct. So <laughs> we were very happy. We needed as many promos as you could. And and what happened is I found people keeping them in the fridge, which I wanted, hmm. taking it out and making it so you can pour it. That was the intention. And that's why it's a memorable set because mm, what... you you made sure that it succeeded, right? And there were yeah. so many small elements to that. Yeah. But I I think we've also done a, a full episode on that case on the, the show. The Litro case, yes, yes, we did we that. Have. 
but what a what a lovely study and there are several like that but this one is so till the launch right yeah. your baby comes out into the mark and you're just making sure everything you know you, the checks and the balances and you're just making sure everything is going not so, when it did, did really well in the market i remember yeah. i remember seeing it vanish in the market and people asking for more but uh, yeah this is what 12 13 years ago yeah so, okay. while both of you are clearly in the mutual admiration club i hate to bring you guys out of it no i want more so which one what do you want me to do say more or not say more no i i have a question to say is there a campaign priya or an insight that you saw and you said i wish we would have we we had done this any work marketing work that you've seen jisko dekh is coming right now to my mind hmm doesn't matter no nothing it's coming to my mind right right Maybe it'll so, come later. Ah, yeah. so as it comes, any work that you love, like etc. Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Okay, okay. One brand that I would like to work for ah. is Nike. Nike, okay. Oh, I right. really want to be part of it. I really want to see what's really going on. What's mm. what's happening? Mm. And that that really interests me. Mm. Or mm. another brand, if not Nike, that I would like to work for, which I think would need my help mm. or intervention, is Skechers. I don't know what they're doing. I'd like to work for that brand. Hmm. Hmm. I've not seen any communication for me to come in, but I could. I I feel that it would be it would be fun. Yeah. Nice. Mm. I've read this. Uh, I think this was the speech that Phil Knight mm. had uh, given mm. in the purpose of Nike. Yeah. And someone's he, cheering for you. Yeah. I I love the clarity of it. It had nothing to do about performance or anything else. It's just about going out there and doing it right. And he just explained, just do it in such a lovely manner. Kind of, you know, gives you goosebumps. So yeah, I can understand. I think that these are the brands that inspire. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Good. Mm. Yes. So my favorite topic. <laughs> We spoke about how you worked with brands to test communication before it goes out and figuring out the entire story. Right. Mm. Now, Priya, this performance marketing. I will put air quotes for it always, mm. as if there was no performance before this happened. but with this performance marketing thing happening with a lot of people putting all the money into it the creatives coming up on the fly how do you think you as a research company ceo mm. looks at the scenario you know i've been grappling with all of this and my simplistic mind says that there is somebody receiving this communication right there is a sender and somebody has to decode this again going back to the principles of communication If we start applying that, we'll really know what we are putting out. Hmm. I think much of the time it's all this FOMO, right? Somebody else is doing it, so we also have to do it. I've cracked FOMO finally. I was wondering what it was. <laughs> yeah, I cracked it. Up. So yeah, it takes me some time because I go to the you know I'll read hundred things and all of that, right? So large part of it is FOMO. Large part of it is saying he has got so many followers. If they are doing influencers, I need to do. So nobody is really applying their mind to it. So it's like a cookie cutter, copy paste kind of a thing. I always say, do what is right for your brand, right? Do mm. what is right for your brand. Do what is right for you. Do what makes the message get across. Correct. Mm. And these are basic principles. And if you're not applying basic principles, then you're just doing everything what other people are saying, and then those people are also one blind leading the other. I, I'm. Met a jeweler who wanted to fire the the digital agency mm. because jeweler jeweler brand. Okay, and he said he wanted to fire his digital agency because they did not put out a Doctor's Day creative. Nice. Like, why? I said why? Why do you want to fire them? Mm. I'm getting so many messages from my friends saying that we did not put out a Doctor's Day creative. We didn't wish them for Doctor's Day. No, this is what's <laughs> happening because uh, uh, this is what everybody is doing. Mm. This is a discipline, right? Again, you're putting yourself out, right? There's visibility. Each of the mediums have a different uh, reason for existence. What you do on LinkedIn is different from Instagram to your Facebook, correct? We took a call that what Facebook for us doesn't really matter, but there is a reason for being on Instagram. There's a reason for LinkedIn. But what should be my LinkedIn thing? Hmm. Like I'll give you an example. I've been doing this for quite some time. I said uh, my social media partner Priyanka. I asked her, "What are the episodes that did well on YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn?" Hmm. And then what I did was, which I'm good at, right? I said, okay, now I'm getting the pattern, and I'm now said this is what's going to be the new plan. Like therefore, what? So I did one episode called the Age of Anxiety, which I like, 
which I think is important. But again, I liked it. Was it relevant for my audience? Mm. Was it too heavy a topic? Mm. Was it too ahead of its time as well? Mm. Right. Yeah. Maybe it'll be relevant later. Yeah. Then she gave me another data point of what we did, like the memorable studies that did very, very well because people want success stories. Mm-hmm. So we have to take the inputs and we have to, we have to course correct. Yeah. That's what's lacking because I don't think that discipline is being used that same, right? Correct. That's why you remember starting me online, offline, performance marketing, all of that. If you take that out and you strip it, you will go back to your basics. And then operate from that. And then you know the medium and all of that. So I yeah. think that's... I think what has muddied the waters, if I were to just add yeah. on to what you say, because with the advent of digital medium and a lot of places to influence the consumers, people lose themselves in a lot of technical data points. Should I do a static or a GIF or an interstitial or a video? How soon should the branding appear? Mm-hmm. And therefore, you know, what is my CTR? How am I, you know, what is the landing page bounce rate? So you lose yourself in so many data points that you forget to answer the how or the why. You're only talking about the what. Yes. And, you know, and therefore you can remain busy in whatever you choose to. But I like what you said that fundamentally it is a communication that somebody is receiving. If you're not solving for their pain point and if you're not getting to the real reason why it should work, everything else will remain superfluous and you will keep struggling with it. Like many ask me, why did you start Thoughtful Thursdays? I'm sure it, uh, uh, I said, see, I want to see whether I can last 20 videos. If I can't last 20 videos, I'm not going to do it. Mm. But if I've lasted 20 videos and I've understood what it is and why I want to do it, then I'll continue. Okay. Right? And it's been a journey. Mm. And then I said, no, I need to actually get it down to what is Thoughtful Thursdays. And I used to say Thoughtful Thursdays, you know, are a conversations that I have with people during the week and Sharavan knows I do that. Things that have sparked a thought in my head. Mm. That me thinking. That's it. That's the value proposition. Nice. And, but I had to work on it, right? Mm. It's not. And why can't we? Because we are in this business. If we are saying that to all our clients, we have to do it for whatever we're doing. Whether it's your podcast or mine. And I like your title because I always say we are growing businesses and building brands. And I like the word building because I do it. I like it. Mm. And I want to be part of that journey. And Correct. It Correct. just so happens that it could be a startup or founder or whatever. As long as you're building a brand, I'm on it. Yeah. Excellent. I want to build on what Sudeep just said, Priya. He said people are getting lost in the what, right? Mm. But the truth is, in the marketing food chain in a company, mm. the person who's just starting out, his job or her job is to focus on that what and the trivialities and the and the and the little bit of how i mean a lot of what what's going on mm-hmm. so for them how do you think they can use research to do their job better or even get better as marketers themselves i think for anything that you do you need to absorb yourself in correct i think we are at a time when there are enough and more books on the subject be it podcasts be it books and if you really want to do it you will There is no shortcut. You have to read. You have to meet those people who are building brands or soak yourself into that because that's a journey that you're on, right? And and how can research help them? Again, it goes back to that thing, right? Because you're building something for a consumer. Is he going to use your product? After using your product, is he going to pay that X amount? Willingness to pay that we call, right? Is he going to be persuaded to go to the shop and ask for it? We can't shy away from these questions, no matter how much we want to. And therefore, I say the FMCG way of thinking is a very good way of thinking. Mm. It trains you to say, what are the benefits? It trains you to answer that at what price point is he going to buy this, right? Packaging nahi hai, uh, branding nahi hua hai, messaging nahi hua hai. But if the consumer needs it and the pain point is being resolved, he will say, aaj hai kya product? Mm. I want to buy it. And that's happened when we did a Wellspun Spaces uh, study. You have the stain technology product. I want it. I'm going to buy it. That's how we cracked the code over there. Because it was not about design. Can you make a more colorful bed sheet? It's mm-hmm. already there. Mm-hmm. But I am sitting on patented technology called stain technology. 
you know our bed sheets get messy indians eat in their bedroom hmm. they draw they do all sorts of things and the bed sheet gets tortured and therefore it could be her favorite bed sheet and just imagine your husband this is actual story of a woman saying my husband is going to be eating tandoori chicken on my favorite bed sheet hmm correct <laughs> practical problem needs a solution so yeah. the solution hai and ogilvy did such a damn good job uh, narramatics and when the women were listening to it with their eyes closed they said this is our story just make this act as is hmm that is the true value of it, right yeah what we do correct and therefore you have to take it bloody seriously correct now i think the way you paint paint this and you set up a purpose i think that becomes very critical quite often i have seen uh, agency folk the creative agency folk being very wary of you know allowing the client to re- use research on their pieces of art right mm-hmm. because too many campaigns have been uh, sacrificed on the altar of research yeah it's a it's a weapon it's a sword research is finally a tool right now you give that tool sword in the hands of a monkey you don't know what it will lead to yeah so the point is that you know you got to be very clear what you're using the research for yes and uh, you know if you're using it for such fundamental work to understand consumer creating those need spaces and then solving for them testing your articulation etc excellent yes uh, if you're just using it to prove a point or you know without using any of your judgment blindly following it might not be the best thing to get into so deep i think a very good one what i've always positioned myself and or max is neutral mm i don't take sides Mm-hmm. I don't have an agenda. I will never say that I know. Even if you've told me in confidence, I don't tell my research. I don't tell anybody. It's like I have kept that and filed that away. Mm-hmm. Because my job is to come back and tell you things as is. And we are not known for sugar coating. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We tell you as is, and that's our reputation, a stellar reputation, and that has held us in good stead always. Yeah. taking the creative agency they put in effort right they have put it it's like you and i to sit and write an idea will fall apart correct right? therefore we have to appreciate that yeah having said that i always tell them that i will try and see if this idea gets a fairest chance however when it does not you need to understand and accept it yeah when i say you need to go to the drawing board it means you need to go to the drawing board we're not having a discussion Mm. We're not having a discussion because I've thought about it in all possible ways and I've anticipated all the questions. When I go for the presentation and Sharon has been with me part of it, I anticipate the questions. I had one moment where remember Prashant Perez said that I can you I can't understand why you're saying this ad is fast. You, I don't know whether you remember the edit uh, that we did, 10 second edit of a tang ad or a 15 second and I think uh, it is long back and I remember mm-hmm. yes and I remember Sharon said impossible why are you saying it's fast? and mm. vijay sikkar and i had just tested two groups in mumbai mm. and the 10 second edit we were trying to we were trying to say 10 second 15 second and 20 second does the messaging get lost it mm. was just some keeda that we were doing mm. and in the 10 second edit it was getting lost and i was prepared for sharan and the ad agency and prashant perez singh not possible i said i i heard that 45 times that ad mm. and i knew the answer I said, now you all take the trouble of listening to it for at least fifteen times, and then you will realize the problem. You yourself will. And after that, they say we get what you're saying, because the main message got lost in the ten second. It was mm. so fast that you only saw the tang has uh, this vitamin, that vitamin. But the first part of it, because it was ten second, was being rushed through. But I think when you do things which are pioneering. I think it really, really helps you think, and that's why I love, you know, couple of things that we did. We wanted to test things, we wanted to challenge things, and uh, that's the opportunity that you get. Nice. It sets me up for the final question that I have on this sure. one. Sure. Sure. Now, marketers, agency folk, all of them work very hard. Yes. What will be your suggestion to any market research professional on breaking bad news to marketers and agencies hmm obviously you don't take sides but there will be times where research comes back and says sorry guys right suggestion yeah. for uh, market researchers or how to do it i can only say one thing you should have the humanness hmm of delivering that presentation and i have learned this from the md and chair hmm 
he said we are not here to write a doomsday presentation i remember him telling mm. nothing can be doomsday correct yeah. you have been given a task you have to say it as is correct however it's your job also to look for opportunities mm. that's why they've come to you they've not come to you saying that you're the bearing of bad news but you should be the harbinger of opportunities and good news as well mm. it might be wrong you might have taken the leap of faith which we do in our ormax recommendations and this but you are approaching it with that lens and i always remember fair i think yeah yeah very simple but not not very easy advice to follow yeah. you sometimes get carried away by you know, the what you really want to convince the client to to do so therefore you have to work hard at what this piece is communication but he just said you are in the communication business i said i thought we were in the other business what he is saying is that after you've done all of this when mm-hmm. you are standing up over there then there is communication skills your presentation skills your tone of voice all of that all of that also has to come and that's why we do the ormax presentation contest not because we have nothing else to do Mm. because we believe that what has to practice and what a safe audience then to practice at or max right i feel the outside world is far more brutal 100% true so i i i think it is all about that now when we look at this journey and culmination yeah excellent i think that's a very honest and a very clear answer for anybody who is looking for some tips to how to do that good excellent so you know i i don't think i have any more pressing questions for you right now but thank but you it's been a joy to talk about all of these topics we have delved into them at different points in time but yes. it is always a pleasure to talk to somebody who has lived and breathed these topics day in day out hence you know listen to your perspective and possibly you know enrich our understanding as well as hopefully everybody else's who is listening to this podcast so thank you thank for you. doing this no, thank you it's been lovely Thank you for listening to Cobb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chavla and Sharvana Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at cobcast.net. That's C O B B C A S T.net.